Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, so my name is Adi uh, and I'm the Director of Business Development at uh, Politica. Um, so today we're actually going to um, relate to the question that is being very frequently asked uh, in our industry. Is B2B dead uh, or is this uh, just getting started? Uh, I have two industry experts with me today. Uh, so the first one is uh, Gabriel Cienchero. Yes, very good. Uh, which is the president of um, market development in North America at GreenTube, uh, which is actually the interactive arm of uh, Novomatic. And uh, we have Derek Morton, which is the CEO of uh, Flowplay, the developer uh, of Vegas World, uh, which is a social casino uh, MMO game. So guys, I'll let you shortly introduce your background. Did they tell us a little bit about what your company is doing? Hi, I'm Derek Morton. I'm CEO of Flowplay. I've been making games for about 23 years now. Uh, I was trading stories with somebody this morning, and they were asking me if I was going to be at GDC. I said I haven't missed a DDC since 1997. Uh, Flowplay started nine years ago to build a casual virtual world platform. Uh, our first game was called Our World for 11 to 17-year-old girls. That launched eight years ago and still pays almost all the salaries of the entire company. But Three and a half years ago, we launched Vegas World, a virtual world which is set in a casino with uh, hotel rooms, uh, nightclubs, restaurants, but there's also 60 multiplayer slots, bingo, um, video poker, poker, blackjack, all the, all the games you'd see in a casino. And that launched really successfully, it's been a great game for us. Uh, and we, about a year ago, started a white label platform that we've been using to work with partners, and that's what I'm here today to talk about. Is you know what we you know what we see is the is a great space to work with uh, partners to help them get into the social casino business. I'm Gabriel Sinchetto. I'm president of market development for GreenTube in North America. As Addy mentioned, GreenTube is part of the Novomatic Group. So the Novomatic Group uh, is in the traditional business. We've got about 22,000 employees worldwide. We operate in over 60 countries. We own casinos. We operate and manage casinos. We do slot arcades, root operations, sports betting, lottery systems. Uh, we make our own machines, develop our own games. So it, it is a quite a large vertically integrated company. Um, we do about $5 billion a, a year US and the company has no debt. Um, GreenTube, is the interactive arm of Novomatic. GreenTube in Europe has been incredibly successful. Uh, they've been doing social casino gaming since 2002. Uh, Game Twist is the main brand, B2C brand in Europe for GreenTube. And GreenTube also does real money markets. And I stress regulated real money markets, Italy and UK. Now the new regulated money markets that are coming online in Spain, Portugal, Holland, Denmark. And GreenTube in the US, we took a different approach. We wanted to come and we looked at that market. Obviously, the B2C social casino has some very big players, Slotomania, Double Down, so that GSN. So that market was quite crowded at the national B2C side. So we decided to come into the US market with a white label B2B solution made specifically for the casino operators. And so that is our approach to, to coming into the US market with social. Okay, so um, I guess what I'm curious to know, and I'm sure some of you here, um, what's the difference in your organizational structure between a regular social casino company uh, and your department who handles this uh, B2B white label product? Well, uh, if you're just a game developer, and I don't mean just a game developer, if you're just developing games for your own, you're probably blissfully unaware of the issues with working with a, a client. <laughs> Someone who has a say-so over the look and feel of what you're producing, who has some opinions about the words that appear on the screen, uh, and someone who you have to coordinate with uh, at, at every, every level just to make sure that they're happy and they're a, great, they're a great customer with you. So you need people on your team that are coordinators and producers. Uh, traditionally, our company had never had uh, a producer or really like an outside coordinator that needed to work with, uh, with a client like this. So we had to assign a couple people in that direction so that you know, they can get a preview the artwork we're working on, what, what the plan is, what the interactivity will be, what the marketing plan will be, and get approval for that from the client. And, and when you're just a developer making great games, you don't have to worry, worry about that too much. So as, as Derek mentioned, so Derek has an approach 
with the B2B and his clients and who they are. So our clients in the U.S. would be a casino operator, a Foxwoods, for example, any of the large Seminoles in Florida. So when we come and we have to do a platform and go to them, as Derek said, a lot of things come into play. When you do a B2C nationwide or worldwide, you control the platform, you control the marketing, you control everything, right? When we have to work with a client, you bring the platform to them, content, everything, but you have to do, it's a enterprise software solution, right? So that's what you're really bringing to these clients. You're selling enterprise sop software. So you have to do integrations with those clients into their loyalty systems, into their CMS systems. You have to create branded experiences for them with the UI. Now, there's solutions out there that generally you'll get a template. You can see what people are doing with templates right away. It's an easy way to go around it, but that's not what we want to bring to the clients. We want to actually give them a good custom user experience to reflect the brand of that customer. So in addition, as Derek mentioned, they're in control of the marketing, right? So you have to make sure that you kind of approve their marketing plan, that they have the right people on board that can operationally execute that, that the budget is correct. So it, it's quite a job to come in and deliver private label or white label B2B solutions to various customers in that market. Okay, and from your conversations with uh, offline casino operators, your clients actually, uh, what do you feel like their goals are in taking your products to the market? You're mostly the casino guy. Okay. So this is a huge issue, right? So, you know, the, the name of the title of this session is, is, is provocative, right? And B2B is just getting started in the US for social, right? So what has kind of made them take longer? Uh, well, one, I think everybody had their focus for the last three years or early on was real money, right? So all the US casino operators were looking at real money as the way to go. And over time, so when GreenTube looked at that market about three years ago, we said, do we want to go real money? We said, no, let's take a wait and see approach. Let's see how real money works out in Nevada, Delaware, and New Jersey. And, but we said, we don't have to worry about that. We can go in with social casino Yesterday, you don't have all those regulatory issues. You can serve it from servers anywhere in the world. You can move with a great B2B white label solution right away, right? So that was the reason. And then the issues with, you have major issues with the casinos because one, they had to understand the difference that they are gonna be two separate platforms. You will have a social casino line of business and you will have a real money line of business. They're separate. The platforms are separate, the regulatory issues are separate, they're meant to do different things, and the players expect different things from both of the platforms. So there's a lot of issues internally that the casinos have to work out with. One is having the right employees and a host of other issues. So would you say generating money is not necessarily their first goal? No. So when we go to a casino and we're pitching that platform, they all look at the Slotomania money, everybody looks at the double down money. They look at that big national. We say to them, look, you are not in that game, right? That game is not for you. If you wanna spend a million dollars a month, have a budget between a million and 200 a month, 200, I mean $2 million a month to spend, you need about 40 or 50 people that are experts in user acquisition, mobile marketing, and I said, then you can think about it, right? So the casinos look at it, they had three options, Run, They could buy, and Caesars bought. They bought Platica. IGT, which was a manufacturer, they bought Double Down. Um, Churchill Downs decided to buy Big Fish. So you can come in and buy, but it's expensive, and it's got more expensive as the years have gone by. Two, you can rent, right? Meaning, with someone like GreenTube, we've done all of that for you. We have all that expertise in-house. So we can bring the platform to you. You don't have all those upfront costs and you get the same results and you save maybe three or $400 million, right? So you can do that route. Or three, they can do it internally and that will fail for sure. They'll never be able to do it internally. So you have those three options for 
a casino operator to consider? So you've actually, you've mentioned expertise. Uh, so you guys are owned by uh, Novomatic. Yep. How often do you push Novomatic content uh, into your B2B products? And also, how does it fit with your uh, independent product of uh, Pharaoh's Way, which is also in the market? Okay, so content. So one of the big benefits of having Novomatic, Big Daddy, being the owner of GreenTube is we have the complete intellectual property and game library of Novomatic. So we have 500 plus games and all the new games that they develop every year available for the US market exclusively for our platform GreenTube Pro. Also, GreenTube has been very aggressive in buying small, innovative game developers. Stake Logic, Absorba Games, and they buy other companies as well. So GreenTube has its own aggressive strategy for content. But in the US and in Europe, we are also an open platform. So GreenTube goes out and aggressively will do content deals, bringing Novomatic content to other providers or vice versa. You know, we're always looking for great game developers to bring content into our platform as well. So it's critical. In the US market, there's another issue when it comes to content. So we bring all that to the table. But you have an issue with GTAC and you have an issue with scientific games. For example, at Foxwoods, let's say you're a casino owner. You've purchased games from those companies, you have them on their floor, and you say to them, hey, you know, we're, gonna, we're launching a new social casino. Hey, we'd love to have some of your best, some of our best performing games from you available on our site. At this point, they are say, saying no, which has got the casino operators like walking on the ceiling, right? So that issue will eventually, I think, be worked out. Of course, GTEC is protecting Double Down, Psy Games is protecting Jackpot Party, so there's definite channel conflict in that situation. So it's interesting from a content strategy how that will all work out in the US market. And Derek, can you tell us a little bit more about the interest of not necessarily casino operators in the B2B product? Uh, most of the people we're working with are uh, companies that have existing traffic that they're looking to monetize by developing a social casino uh, to run in front of their customers, or uh, celebrities or brands that have a, a particular interest in having a social casino that they can promote either using their brand or using their celebrity. Uh, we're about to launch a game called Celebrity World with six of the world's biggest celebrities. Uh, they'll each be, have characters in the game where you can play poker with them, you can play blackjack with them, and they'll be promoting it on their social, their, uh, social networks. Uh, one of them has 75 million followers. Uh, we're also uh, the social casino provider for Microsoft. So Microsoft came to us and said, uh, we, we run, a, we run a, a casual game platform. We've got lots of great customers that are really in this demo. Uh, we'd like for you to provide us with a social casino platform to put in front of those customers so that we can have a social casino solution and monetize those customers. So those are really the two kind of people we look at. is like people that have brands uh, like celebrities. We also did a project with Atari. So we have a, a atarijackpots.com, which is a social casino, where all the, um, the slot games are branded with Atari arcade games. Uh, so those are the people we're, we're talking to and looking for, and most of these guys are really looking at it for the money. Uh, they, they really want to you know, just capitalize on the social casino market. So their goals are different than right. casino operators usually. Okay. And so what are the challenges you're experiencing uh, working with those uh, offline, usually casinos or companies, um, while supplying the service? Um, I think we have an easier job because uh, the people we're working with are, are pretty online marketing savvy and have interactive groups or have interactive experience. Uh, I know the casinos that I've spoken to uh, are less likely to have really seasoned online marketing guys so that we, we have an easy time when it comes to uh, teaching them how to, how to have a, a great uh, customer acquisition experience, what to promote to the customer on their website, and how to make sure that's consistent and bringing people to a nice splash page that, uh, that you know, introduces customers to that social casino really well. Uh, I guess the, the challenges we usually have are um, uh, we're a pretty racy site, uh, it's a racy game. I mean, people fall in love, 50,000 people have gotten married in the game. Uh, there's a room where you can actually go have sex with someone else in the game and take a shower afterwards. Uh, so not all of our partners want that in their version of the game. Uh, so <laughs> we, we do have, we have to tone it down for some people. Uh, for 
us in the casinos, it's very difficult. So the casinos really don't have a good sense of online. And what they'll do is they will go, and I will give a big shout out to Melissa Blau. They will go to consultants like Melissa. They'll hire her to help them assess the market, to assess vendors, assess technology, um, possibly even recommend people to internally to hire people for them. So the consultants can, can do a wide number of things for the casino operator at one level. So we would have to interact with Melissa you know, on a bid or an RFP for a client, and that goes out and everybody goes in and tries to get that business. Because the, internally, the casinos are not prepared. They don't have the people, now depending on how big or small, it could vary, right? So the first thing is they don't have the staff internally that understands online in general. Then when you get to operations in online marketing, it's even worse, right? So to understand mobile marketing, to understand creating a content strategy, to understand how the UI should work, to understand about KYCing, know your customer, because the casinos are very, very, very fearful that they want to make sure that everyone, even on a social site, is 21 and over. So there's a lot of things that come into play. So it's a big educational experience and having whether there is a consultant that will stay on, uh, maybe they'll stay on for six months to a year, and that consultant will help them hire people with that expertise to come internally. Or they may ask, if they're a smaller casino, they may go to come to Green Tube and say, because we have that expertise in house, to do everything for them if they want us to. And we have to be prepared to do that. And then that will change the structure of the deals, right? On how much we actually have to do for them. Mm -hmm. So usually the day after, where you sell the, uh, your white label product. Mm -hmm. So usually you keep maintaining it. You mentioned marketing before. Mm -hmm. So who spends the marketing budget? Who pushes new content to the, to the products? Our partners do all the marketing, so that's, that's their piece. Their piece is to bring us customers, and that's one of the reasons why we're in this business. Customer acquisition is a big challenge, uh, so we like to leave that to the partner and just keep a, a portion of the revenue for our, for our profits. Uh, so from the, day, the time the, the deal is done, we operate the game, we do customer service for the game, so we, we respond to the emails, we have an 800 number for all of our, our customers, so for, for the clients to call in and then talk to our customer service people. Uh, we host it, uh, everything. It, all, the, all the client has to do is um, bring customers to the game and uh, get a check from us once a month. For us with the casino, so we bring the platform, the game content, our expertise, our marketing expertise if needed, but in general, the casino will be responsible for the marketing. They must create a budget, work with us to get a budget together, and how to implement and execute that marketing plan. So it's going to be a lot, it's a lot of back and forth between us and the casino. Or the casino may hire a third party to do the marketing for them, which we would have to work with them. So there's a lot of moving parts always especially on the marketing side, since we aren't in control of the marketing budget or the people, we have to work with the casino to make sure they execute that properly, because it will affect the performance of, ultimately, of our platform. So do you think they have some kind of vision of really competing all of the other products uh, out there in the market? Let's say Slotomania, House of Fun. You're talking about our, our potential clients? Are they yeah. aware of what's going mm -hmm. on? Um, I don't think anybody's the, an expert to the level that we are. Uh, certainly, there's an, a, the, our first meetings with people are really about educating them about the space, who's out there, how much money they're making, how much money they can make with us. We usually do like a, initial estimates based upon uh, what audience they have that exists or how many you know, Facebook likes they have or things like that to sort of estimate what kind of revenue we, we estimate with, to work with them on a monthly basis. Uh, but in general, they, all they know is that they read that the social casino space is, is very lucrative and that they want to be part of it. I think ultimately for us, as I said before, when you go to a casino, it, it's very focused, right? So a casino has a DMA, a market area, where they generate most of their revenue from clients, right? And I think initially, they have a database, right? They have loyalty programs. So you can start out right away. So ultimately, yes, you can make money in virtual currency, but the real play for them, it's a huge marketing platform, right? 
you have, when you go to a casino, if they don't have an uh, their extend their brand online for social or real, depending on what market they're in, those people are going to go play somewhere else. They'll go to Slotomania. They'll go to GS Game Show Network. They have many, many options. So since there is a value to those customers, you know, that the casino gives to them, it makes total sense for them extend their brand online with our platform, you can do very targeted offers while in-game to those players, because we know when that player is online exactly who they are, because we're tied into their loyalty system. And then the casino can actually give targeted offers, and it's a much more efficient way for them to target, they could save money there, and ultimately to drive those people back into the casino. That's the real power of that platform. How well would you say it works? We are getting ready to launch our first client. So it took me 17 months of a sales cycle to get the sales cycles are very long. Uh, they take their time. Uh, you can't, you like to push them forward, but they do take their own time. Contract negotiations are very long. If you're dealing in tribal markets, it can be even more complicated, the contracts. So it's a very long sales cycle. Then you have a build cycle. It could be 90 days on average, but if they want significant customization and significant integrations internally, it can be longer. So from the time you have a first contact with a customer to the time you launch, it could be 14 months to 24 months, I mean, in total. So it's a very long sales cycle. And Foxwoods will be our first client. We wanted a marquee client to go out with. The launch, of course, has to be successful and it has to do well. Once that happens, then we should be able to pick up the pace of our pipeline. But it will still, that, that sales cycle is still gonna be there. And for you, Derek, can you see the conversion already between, uh, in your current products? How many people uh, are actually going into this uh, uh, white label product? In terms of how popular it is among people mm -hmm. that are out there in the space? Um, gosh, everybody's completely different. So, I mean, we work with a huge variety of customers. I mean, Atari's a brand holder. Um, the, the celebrities, they have their own thing going. Uh, Microsoft, big company that has a big portal. So there's, no, uh, there, there's, there's a huge variety of people that we're talking to. Um, I wouldn't say that... Um, there's you know more than a, a few dozen clients that we'd, we'd want to talk to in the, in the, in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to work with really small people. Our goal is to really sign up just two new customers a year because mm -hmm. uh, we feel like that's a great pace for us and if we can be really successful with them, we'll be able to focus on them. Uh, we do have minimums in terms of like what we expect in terms of a marketing budget, what we expect in terms of a, a number of uh, customer acquisition, new customers we expect them on a monthly basis. So we are a little bit picky, uh, so we don't just take everybody. But I, I wouldn't say there's a massive number of people that we would you know, talk to about the business. Okay. And, what do you, and what do you think uh, still we see very few, for example, uh, offline casino operators that are entering this niche? As I think it went back to previously what I said, there is one, it's a long sales cycle. Two, they need to, they are gonna need to help from consultants to recommend solutions to them, right? So it's a long process to get in. As well, I think they know that real money may come. They know it's gonna be slower. I think eventually real money will come out in the New York and US and will do well, but I think it's at a much slower process, pace, that everybody expected. So I think, you know, which now makes it even, there's more on their plate thinking about their social casino solution and their real money solution. So, but it is just getting started. It is, you'll start to see them pop up. There are some that are live now with different players. And so you'll start to see more casinos. And so you might have individual, and it depends on the structure of the organization. You can have an individual casino, and then you have groups in the US where they may have 20 to 25 casinos spread out over six or seven states. And then you start to get into the strategy. Do they want to do an individual brand? Do they want to do things in a regional brand? Or do they want to do individual instances of each one? And if they are larger, like for example, 
Caesars had enough gravitas to do a brand that went national. Other casinos or companies may want to narrow that focus and just focus on those markets where they're very strong. So some brands could, they could decide to go out with a national strategy. I think others are gonna be much more focused and it's gonna be on a case by case basis depending on the company, the structure, and the money that they're thinking about from a budgeting standpoint for it. Okay. So in your eyes, what's next for B2B? Two years from now or maybe a year from now? Um, I think in both of our cases, what's next for, what, what B2B can really do is uh, help people explore where casino gaming is even going. Mm -hmm. I think there's a huge concern right now about the, the, the loss, the generational loss that's going to happen in land-based casinos. Their, uh, their, their main customers are aging out. Uh, they're millennials and younger people that are playing games primarily on phones and in portable devices. And the, you know, the gambling market is freaking out about what to do about that. And I think B2B services and social services in general can go a long way to help them figure out what is that hybrid model between uh, a, a, a slots, which you know, frankly, most people that play games are completely bored by that are that are you know younger than 40, uh, and then you know how to how to get in the sort of the, the mechanics that people are used to in a real game, but make that a gambling game. So I think that there's a lot we can do to sort of be on that uh, be on that edge, and then move things towards uh, towards real money. I think uh, Derek hit the nail on the head on that aspect of it. So for the casinos, will be one to kind of stem the flow of their existing customers to other sites. They're gonna to wanna to extend that brand, try to keep the players there. And as Derek mentioned, they are very worried about aging out of their existing base. I think social is a great one mechanism to try to potentially attract that young person. So look, a younger person, I hate saying that, but let's say a millennial. They, the casinos know they go they spend money on nightclubs. You know, they have no probably problem dropping four or five hundred bo dollars on bottle service at nightclubs. They go to the restaurants. They go shopping. Will they go and play a slot machine? Hell no. And that freaks the casinos out. So they're trying to figure out how they can appeal or get games or ways to appeal, whether it's through mobile or through tablets, to get, let's say, that millennial person to uh, want to engage more with the casino, you know, instead of out, you know, with their, let's say, non-gaming revenue type of services. Okay. Uh, so, thank you very, very much, guys, uh, for the insights. Uh, I think that I'm someone who used to claim that B2B is pretty dead. Uh, after today's conversation, I kind of look at it from a different angle. Um, so thank you for that. We're going to open it uh, to Q&A. You mentioned that you leave most of the marketing up to your partners, but there must be situations where when you look at the implementation or the approach that there are ways to improve. So how important is it that you stay in sort of regular contact and, and, and help drive sort of ways that they can better market the product? Yeah, we actually create the marketing campaigns for them in terms of what the messaging is and what, what it, it coincides with what we're driving on in the product. So, you know, when we have a new slot game coming out, we create the media that the, that the partner is going to put out to their customers. Uh, we help them write the, the social media blurbs that they, that they put on Facebook and other places. Um, banners, everything they need, uh, we supply. So it really, it's, it's more they're, they're spending, it's about the marketing budget and the, and the places, of, the points of presence where they're reaching out to consumers that they can control, uh, but we, we really provide most of the stuff because you can't expect someone who's not uh, a social casino player to really know what messaging works, uh, what the demo is, how to target that demo, and how to keep, get people to respond to a call to action. Hi. Um, it feels to me that this is more of a, a cost line and a data information for the B2B side as opposed to a real revenue generator. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, yes, as I said, every casino, there is money to be made in virtual currency, right? Depending on that casino, depending on the size of their database, depending on the size of their market, right? And as you said, yes, absolutely leveraging the platform from a marketing standpoint for them, data analytics on their customers, get true convergence with the offline and online in the casino, that's the real ultimate 
ultimate goal that we see, the value that we think we can bring to an individual casino. And B2B can deliver that? I mean, sorry to... Yeah. Be, because, well, just because you've got a Novomatic slot and they're playing an IGT slot, they're playing a WMS slot, they're, you know, where's, where's that, that that's, convergence? That's like the most minimal port part of what we do. It's a huge platform. It is a big platform. We have people that know how to do UI. We know people that know how to engage with customers to make that interface good. Not only do you have that, then you have the other piece of it, as you said. We have content, not only content from Novomatic, but from third parties and from GreenTube as well. So now you have a UI strategy. You have a content strategy. You then have to get a marketing strategy together, and you must combine the online marketing strategy with the offline people, and that is a job in itself because the traditional people have to understand that they, can, they now must combine, as you said, all of the data that is available offline combined with the data coming from the online and combine that data together, together to get really a 360 view of that customer both on and offline. So, you know, it was a good question and it is about data and it is about analytics and it is about getting the online and offline working together and then having the business analysts able to make sense of that and make recommendations on what to do with that data. I hope I answered your question. Sort of, I mean, just out one question to you. I mean, can, can you see any of these B2B guys getting into the top 20 or 30 social casinos out there? 30 is not too hard to do. Uh, yeah. 20 possible. I mean, for most of the guys we're working with, uh, five to $10 million a year in revenue when they only have to have two or three people on a team managing the, the marketing buys and, and coordinating with us is, is meaningful. And it's absolutely not the point for them to get into the top 10. I mean, there could be the rare, as I said, depending on the size of that casino operator and the scope that they have, they may decide to go that route, but it's, it's, it's a big money game and they have to be prepared to do so. Hey, um, how much of this B2B is mobile and uh, how much that's, let's say, browser, desktop, so? Um, that is on a case-by-case -case basis, too. So you'd have to think, if you look at the database of a particular casino, right, it's going to probably skew a bit older, right? They'll know that. But we also know, so you're going to have to have a desktop version that's a good one. But everybody knows, and we see the figures now, that even at the casino levels, with the being skewed, that mobile has surpassed the desktop. So you still have to have the desktop available, kind of that bridge, you know, for some people that still want to use it for what's in that database. But mobile is priority number one, without a doubt. It depends on the customer for us. Uh, some of our customers, like Microsoft, we're not doing a mobile game for them. So they're, they're, it's all about their portal uh, for our other customers. Mobile's an important piece. Uh, Superdata says that, that we're 50-50, that 50% of the social casino revenue is on desktop and 50% is on mobile, uh, but that's because of the demo. The demo's older. 30% uh, of them do not have a, a, a feature, a, do not have a, a smartphone, uh, and the other, another 30% don't play games on that smartphone. I've got one more. Uh, how do you balance, I guess, the, the uh, the customizations that may be asked of you with certain partners, maybe even partners that you very badly would like to sign, but 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 have extreme customizations that they that they might want. Is that a consideration as you're developing the platform so it can support multiple customizations and handle updates seamlessly, or do you try and really focus your efforts more on partners who will fit within a particular mold that you're that you've created? Well, for us, for the casino, so. We have to make a calculated risk, right? So if you have a, we have to try to assess a customer's ability to make money, right? Depending on what they might do, depending on what kind of advice they might be getting from consultants, um, that yes, they're committed, they have a budget, they're gonna hire, they're gonna do all the right things. We then might take more of a risk with that particular client and do the customization that they require for, let's say, 
something that would make sense, right? The higher the risk, the client, and then we have to actually make an assessment of do we even want to work with the client? If they don't, if they're not going to do prepare to spend, at least in their micro world, right? The right amount of marketing and have the right people support it. You know, we might have to walk away because ultimately, let's say we get a client and we do everything right. We launch that product, we do a great UI, we have more content under the sun, but we can't force them to spend money, right? Unless we tell them, hey, look, guys, you know what? We'll come in, you're a mess, we're gonna actually spend the money for you, and we're gonna do an 80 20 rev share in our favor, right? But we're gonna do everything for you. But in the cases where the casinos will want to control the marketing budget, then it's different. So each client is on a case by case. It's a little bit of a black art, a little bit of a gut feel of, you know, how much risk you want to take with a particular client in each, in each scenario. Uh, you talked about loyalty plans and basically integrating um, the online, I mean, the digital that you're bringing into the existing loyalty plans of the casinos that you're working with. Uh, first of all, how does that work? I mean, you know, the big, the big uh, casinos that do it are, you know, regulated in a good way. But, I mean, do you trust the casinos to understand exactly the... You're entering a very... Uh, problematic realm when you start integrating real life rewards with social casino and you're basically um, relying on your customers to do that I mean to run the actual loyalty rewards so yes it is it is you're right there are pitfalls and I think there's going to be some learning processes as you work work with each casino right with and each one their each structure is different so when we try to map out business models, so look, you can to tie into the rewards, right? So there could be multiple currencies on our site. You can have a basic currency, you can do premium currencies, you can, the great thing about social is you can do a lot of things, right? Because it's entertainment, but it does get complicated. So then when you're actually thinking about that, right, with a loyalty, and that's where you really try to tie in with the traditional marketing people. What are they doing now, right? How does a loyalty point for them translate into points you're doing on the site? That's a big job, right? And it has to be calculated correctly. But if done so, then you, can, you have a really powerful opportunity for that traditional marketing to bring offers, right, Let's say you have nightclubs, you've got hotels, you've got shopping, right? You can actually offer rewards that are meaningful to you. Let's say, you know, if you have a loyalty and you're part of a casino and, like, they have great entertainment, someone fantastic is coming, you want to see them, you know, and they know who you are, they know that maybe you've been to two or three concerts, they're going to target that to you if you're in-game and what you're doing. So it, it, it is, it's a critical thing. And I think that's something that we really work with them from a business model standpoint to try to get right and then tweak it. Tweak that as the, the game economy and that economy as we go along. Because if you mess it up, you're in trouble. And just to add, our attorneys have advised us that um, as long as the loyalty system that you're beefing up on your social side is not tied to any game activity, like the results of a slot or the results of a poker game or a blackjack game or any of that uh, sort of more random activity, as long as it's based upon um, spending and visit activity that is equivalent across the board so that every player's uh, chance to earn those rewards is, is the same across the board, then you're, you're on good legal ground. But, I mean, that's pretty open to interpretation, just in the sense that something like leveling up is not directly tied to the game, but it actually is, so... Right, right, right. So you wouldn't use the level system. What would you use is, like, you know, your daily visit, like, you get 500 points because you came today, 500 points you came tomorrow. You get, uh, you know, 200 points for every $10 you spend, that kind of thing. So it's more like, more like flying rewards than, like, rewards that are based on the outcomes of any kind of product that's in the game. And you're right, that all gets to the meta game, right? So you can't, when you get a game, you, you're not gonna change the mats or the pay tables. On, those games will operate as they're meant to, right? So in order to, look, we all get real money games, right? It would be fantastic if 
you, we have a lot of games that are created from the ground up to be social. So, but a lot of the real money games actually do well online in the social environment, obviously. Double Down or Slotomania wouldn't be doing as well as they have a lot of games that have come from the traditional market and the players like them, right? But it's all about the, the meta game around that to make it fun, make it social. And you're right, you have to be very careful on how, let's say, whatever game mechanics that you're putting in there are done in the right way. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for your time.